Seekers, I'm Nick. A few weeks ago, Thermaltake released their series of commander cases featuring an array of new designs based on the same chassis. As well as that, they released their new P1000 opaque pastel coolant. They hit me up and asked me if I wanted to check out one of their new commander cases and this new coolant that they claim won't clog up your loop. It's been a while since I built a proper loop on the channel and I decided that I'd build a new custom loop in the Thermaltake Commander C35 as a bit of a semi-permanent system to see if this new P1000 opaque coolant will clog up blocks after about a month or so. This build is going to be a little bit different to what you'd usually see on the channel regarding builds. This is a showcase build, but it's also going to be a semi-permanent system that I'm going to use for testing over the span of the next month or so. The reason why is because I really want to see if this new opaque coolant is better than Thermaltake's old opaque coolant, which is, from experience, a serial block clogger. Now, we're going to revisit this build with all of the performance metrics at the end of testing when... We're going to do that probably around June and we're going to let you know if this coolant does what it claims. We're going to tear down the block so you can see if there's any build up at all. And yeah, if you're keen to see that, stay tuned. Anyway, let's build.
force. It's calling to you. Just let it in. I felt a great disturbance in the force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. There are stories about what happened. It's true. You started. Sin, don't you think like that? I will love you endlessly. If you only believe me, don't you think like that? I will love you Let's talk parts because I'm pretty sure you guys will want to know. The motherboard is the Gigabyte X99 Phoenix SLI. I bought this board when it came out for a ridiculous amount of money and it's been used so many times for so many builds on the channel and it still kicks ass. The CPU is the Intel i7-6900K. The 6900K is an 8 core 16 thread content creation beast. I bought this CPU when it came out for like $1,500 and it's been an absolute beast the whole time and I was using it for quite a while before I switched over to Threadripper. The GPU is the Gigabyte GTX 1080 G1 Gaming. I had this card spare and I usually use it on a CPU test bench but yeah it's the only GPU that I've currently got a water block for. Well, it's the only GP I've got a water block for that isn't Claire's Titan. I'm not allowed to use that for water cooled builds anymore. But yeah, that's a whole nother story. The RAM we used is two 32 gig kits of Thermaltake water RAM at 3200 megahertz, equaling a total of 64 gigs of RAM. This is probably the most overkill RAM that you could buy. And let's be honest, you don't need to water cool RAM. It, it, RAM just doesn't get that hot, but man, does it look cool. To cool all the bits that typically get hot, we use the Thermaltake Pacific M360 Plus Hard Tube Water Cooling Kit. Obviously, we use a stack of extra fittings to make this pretty complicated loop, and I'll list all of the extra fittings that we use in the description down below. Also, all of the lighting products that you're seeing in this build are also part of this kit too, so yeah. That's why I didn't talk about lighting. That's why I'm not going to talk about lighting, because we didn't need to add any additional lighting to this build at all. Also, I just wanted to add as well, I didn't show any of the pipe bending and the insulation of all the pipes because most of the pipes, minus the one you actually saw me bend, were offcuts from other loop builds. I've got so many offcuts, it's not funny. <laughs> Lastly, let's talk about the case. It's the brand new Thermaltake Commander C35. I think Thermaltake has borrowed what Cooler Master did with the H500M and made their own version, albeit a bit smaller than the H500M. I was pretty surprised with how easy it was to build a loop in. The case doesn't look that big, but 
I didn't have any issues fitting anything in the case. And I, I did do that thing where I basically just sat there and I was just like, where's everything gonna go? <laughs> you sit there for like an hour planning out your loop, but that's pretty normal when, you, when you're going down the path of water cooling stuff. The C35's airflow appears to be pretty good and the idle temps I observed when I was configuring all the lighting were pretty good. The CPU was idling around 24 degrees and the GPU was around 20 degrees with an ambient temperature in here of around 18 degrees. Overall, I don't think that's pretty bad, but yeah, we'll dive into all of that stuff when we get around to doing the full testing with the coolant at a later date. If you're interested in any of the parts on this build, you can find links down below in the description. Also, if you guys want any of the music that I make featured in any of these videos, check out our Patreon, yes. I make all the music here as well. Also, if you've got any questions about this loop build, drop a comment down below, and I'm actually answering all of those questions that you've got in the follow-up when we do it in around June. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do one. Tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And I'm actually pretty happy with how this loop turned out. Um, yeah. It, it, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with all the bends. I'm, I'm, I, I like it. But let's see if this coolant holds up after a month. Who knows? Mm -hmm.